Welcome back everyone, Michael here with Offshore Citizen. One of our viewers, Murat, thank you Murat, again I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly, uh, asked that we do a video uh, talking about how to select the right agents or the best agents when it comes to citizenship by investment, residency by investment, etc., and how to avoid getting ripped off. So today I'm going to talk to you about you know, how to pick the best agent, I guess we'll call it, for these sorts of things. So we're going to dive in. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button, hit the all notifications. If you like the videos, please share them with your friends. I really appreciate your support. We're trying to grow the channel and all your support is very helpful. So also give it a thumbs up. That'd be great. Uh, if you'd like help with these subjects of getting second citizenships, getting residencies, getting passports, forming companies, opening bank accounts, getting uh, tax optimization or asset protection or doing international investing, please reach out to me. You can book a call calendly.com forward slash Michael dash Rosmer. There's a link in the description below or send a message through our websites offshorecitizen.net and offshorecapitalist.com. Okay, so uh, full disclosure here, I'm super biased here because we provide these services, right? So really, if you want to get a, you know, citizenship by investment program, etc., please contact us. We're happy to help you. Uh, that being said, I will try to answer this question in as impartial and unbiased way as possible and give, you know, the most, uh, most reasonable answer. However, I do appreciate anyone who uh, comes up and works through us uh, because, you know, obviously that's our business. And so, you know, it's some way that... Uh, we can help you and hopefully you know benefit from it in the process. So I think a few things, maybe I'll personalize this a little bit and give some context to uh, the industry as a whole. So first of all, generally speaking, the industry is not full of scammers, okay? At least when it comes to official programs. So unofficial programs, I think you should be extremely wary. I have, you know, basically it's my business to try and find solutions for you guys that other people don't have, right? So we research and we network and we, you know, meet people in different countries. And when I'm having conversations with them, I say, you know, hey, listen, is there something extra that you can do? Are there contacts? Are there loopholes? Like, give me the goods. You know, we want to learn how to do it. We want to be able to help our clients and connect them in that regard. And so it means that I do due diligence on a bunch of these different things. And generally speaking, I can tell you that uh, most unofficial programs, especially low-cost unofficial programs, are scams, okay? So if, for example, somebody comes to you and says, hey, I can get you a Slovenian citizenship for 20,000 euros or $20,000 or something, this is a scam. Uh, generally speaking, if they say, you know, we can get you a Romanian citizenship and hey, we can accept anybody, you know, you're from Africa, you're from India, you're from wherever, no big deal, you know, we can get that for you. Generally, that's a scam, okay? So those things aside, if we start talking about official programs, official programs are very rarely a scam, okay? Very, very rarely. Most of the time, it's legitimate. What you're typically going to deal with is, you know, what is the situation on price and what is the situation on service? And full disclosure, the way that we do it is rather than going and having a relationship with every individual government and signing up, et cetera, we work with partners in these different areas. We basically try and vet the best who we can and we work with them and kind of create a little partnership to be able to supply that. And that allows us to reach more jurisdictions, be able to help more people, but also stay up to date on current, on kind of the best practices and the service, et cetera, because otherwise uh, I'd have to constantly be retraining our team, et cetera, and this would be quite, uh, quite a nightmare. I'm already super busy, so that would be, uh, that would be no good. So that's how, how we do it. Um, there's a few exceptions to that where, you know, because we have really good relationships, because, you know, I'm from there, we have close friends from there, et cetera, then we do it internally. But generally speaking, we try to extend our abilities out by working with other others and again, trying to find ones who are good uh, and ones who can do things that you know, aren't normally available or do it easier, et cetera, okay? So that's the first thing. The second thing is uh, there can be cost as a factor, there can be service as a factor. And so I would say that Sometimes, uh, 
if it's the most expensive of the options, it's probably overpriced. I can certainly think of a few companies that charge a lot and I just find that, you know, knowing what things cost and then knowing what they charge, it's kind of difficult for me to reconcile those two. Very similar to very often what you get when you deal with the big four accounting firms, right? Ernst & Young, PwC, et cetera, Deloitte. Um, if you deal with those guys, generally you're gonna overpay, right? Generally the cost is gonna be higher than it needs to be. And I've worked with those guys a bunch before, people who work for me on my team, used to work at those firms, et cetera, and just generally we've seen that things are, are overpriced. Some people want it anyway, because they think that there's a credibility mark that they can at least go and argue and you know, put in front of investors or something that, hey, at least this was audited by Deloitte, you, know, you can't come to us, so there's kind of a cover your ass sort of mindset. I don't know that that actually really holds up in practice, meaning that I don't know that saying, hey, it was done by Deloitte really helps you. Certainly there have been cases where uh, people from KPMG have actually been arrested for you know, selling tax shelters that weren't proper. And so you know, it didn't really help the clients in those cases and vice versa. Likewise, you can see, uh, for example, Caterpillar, major like Fortune 500 company, their structure in Switzerland was designed by PwC. Uh, it was flagged by high, ri uh, it was high risk by their audit team. And they were threatened pretty harshly with a lot of fines uh, based on that, like it didn't save them. So anyway, that's something to consider. So usually I would say that you want to exclude the most expensive options. Not always, right? Uh, sometimes there's reasons and sometimes maybe you, you know, it's worth it to you and you don't care, that's fine. Uh, next, I would say, Usually, I try to go with uh, people who are, I guess I would say, uh, organized and, uh, let's see here, how, how would I describe it? B basically, I'm interested in people who have a system that uh, they can work through. So I think that's very important. Next, I like to deal with people who uh, you, have a, you can have a lot of communication very easily. Okay, that's a thing that I think is important that they don't just put you into kind of like a meat grinder sort of process. This is, I think, especially important when you're forming companies. Forming companies are something that's really commoditized. It's mostly just an administrative process. The problem with it being treated as an administrative process is most of those who are providing that administrative service are not giving you the intelligence behind it. You know, they're just saying, hey, listen, what do you want? There's the catalog, great, we'll sell it, we'll process it, et cetera. And the problem is you might end up buying the wrong thing or you might not realize the consequences of buying that thing when you do it. So generally speaking, I think that if you can have somebody who is competent and intelligent, who you can have a conversation with, who you can go back and forth with as you have questions, et cetera, who is quite available. I think for me, availability is a big thing. Like uh, there's one company that we work with and they're just fantastic. You know, they just do a really exceptional job. I can, even though there's supposed to be, you know, two days a week that they're off, I can tell you that they're on it very snappy at getting back. Something is supposed to take three days and it takes one day. Uh, and I really appreciate that. So the ability to communicate directly is, uh, to me, uh, quite helpful. Uh, then you might say, okay, uh, I think one of the biggest things in detecting kind of scams is the flow of money. Now this would be in particular for uh, citizenship by investment and or residency by investment. So it's worth noting that, you know, for example, while we do citizenship by investment programs, including unofficial ones, we don't actually handle the money, right? So you don't send the money to us, you send the money to whoever the agent is or the government, right? And so there's kind of that separation. I think that if you're in a situation where somebody's saying, hey, send us the money, mm, that's a little bit, a little bit off. Now there's Two cases where I can think of that we do do that and it's just kind of the process and how the process has to work in that particular case, but very rarely is that the case. So if you're gonna make an investment or a donation, generally you shouldn't be saying, hey listen, uh, like if I'm sending the money to these guys here, well then you better make sure that they're licensed, that they're on the government list of people, et cetera, and uh, that that's somehow controlled. Uh, if they are, because that's how a lot of countries do it, is they'll have, you send it to the agent, but you send it to an agent who is, you know, on a list, et cetera, then great, perfectly fine. They may be uh, 
licensed escrow with the country, et cetera. So that can be fine. And certainly, sometimes, uh, say, if somebody wants to pay with crypto, we help people you know, get citizenships by uh, using crypto. Uh, sometimes uh, residencies as well. And in cases like that, there's definitely a, a situation where you know, the funds have to go to some sort of a broker who's going to facilitate the transaction. And so there's that. But again, you know, we're not that broker. So that's something else to, to be aware of. Those would be kind of my major, uh, my major considerations. I don't think that you need to be super worried about being scammed. That's uh, at least not with, like I said, these official programs. With the unofficial programs, there's some I've had where I, people tell me, oh, you know, I paid for this. And I'm like, oh boy, I hope you get it. I really hope you get it. But uh, it's kind of unlikely. And so, you know, those ones be worried about. Uh, but the official ones, those ones you typically shouldn't have to worry about. So I hope that helps. I hope it uh, gives a little bit of context answer. Like I said, self-servingly, totally, uh, totally biased in this respect. If you would like help with these things, please contact us. You know, we would be really happy to help you. That would be, uh, that would be wonderful. Uh, but you know, if there's somebody else who you're going to work with, then that's by all means fine too. We definitely have clients who you know, work with us for certain things and work with somebody else for other things as well. And that's perfectly fine. So I hope that helps. I'm going to look forward to seeing you guys on the next video.